Hi, my name is Mark Walker and I'm joined by Nate Keefe. How are you, Nate? Good, Mark. Thanks. Uh, Nate's a sales engineer at Scribe and uh, he's here to talk with us today about the fetch block that's part of a Scribe Online advanced map. So he's going to help us understand what a fetch block is, some real world use cases where you might use it, and give us a little demonstration and train us how to put it together. Yeah. So, so the fetch block, it's an advanced map block that you would use against tables that support reads from them. Okay. And so what it actually does is it'll pull in an additional data set into your map. Oh, so it's, it's sort of like having a, another query that you can apply to. Yeah, if you think about your query as your first data set that you're going to process, right. think about the fetch being able to be used to pull in additional data sources. All right, so we're kind of getting into why you would use it. Do you have any other examples of why you might want to use the fetch block? Yeah, so um, it's, it's conceptually it's a lot like a subquery. So okay. I have some data that I'm going to use for processing, but I might need to get more data to make that integration make more sense. Okay. So if you think about the fetch block, it's able to pull out additional record sets from other connections. So it could be from your source connection, could be your target or a third connection. Oh, so it doesn't have to be tied. So even though it's another kind of a query, it doesn't have to be tied exactly to the same connection you're using in your query. It could, right. You said it could be from any other connection that's available in exactly. your Scribe Online map. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so do you have a couple of use cases that you can yes. tell us about? So uh, the first use case that you could use it for, if you think about, I want to actually update a bunch of accounts where they have the same exact criteria. So today, if I'm using the lookup block, that's really used for just one pulling back one result. So what I can do with the fetch block is I can pull back all the accounts, let's say, where the owner ID name is equal to Nate. Okay. So I could use the fetch block, get all those accounts, and then I can process those however so I So you're want. in the middle of a map processing a record set from your query block, but then you want to process like another subset of records that have right. a similar criteria, and you can kind of break out of that and use that fetch block for that. Yeah. Okay. So another example might be um, if I'm using Salesforce outbound messaging, mm -hmm. that you could maybe set that up just to send you the ID of the record, or it's really for only one record set that you're going to get back. Right. So what the fetch block can be useful for is to pull back more data from that record or other additional related records. Okay. And your last example. So the last example, which I want to kind of get into, I've prepared yeah. a, a short little demo for us today, okay. is about building relationships. And so we know with Scribe Online, the connectors are going to pull relationships that are defined in that connection. So if I'm working with a SQL database, I can have constraints in there between keys. If I'm working with a Salesforce or CRM, there's relationships for parent and child entities in there as well. Right, but sometimes a connector or a database might have a uh, relationship that's not overtly declared. Yes. And for Scribe Online to work with its relationship features, it needs those relationships to be, like I was saying, overtly declared. And if they're not, but you know there's a relationship there that you yeah. work with, you can use this fetch block to sort of put, those, put that data back together. Exactly. Okay. So, so let me show you kind of an example of this. If I have, let's say I have a backend database and uh, my front end application, it knows what those relationships are, but it hasn't defined them in the database. Okay. So I need to process some data. Let's say it's a, a sales order and then the details about that. Mm -hmm. So I have some, a sales order header with its line items. So I can see that obviously in here, um, I can make a foreign key relationship just by looking at the data. I'll know that these line items are related to this sales right. order, but the connector is not showing me that because it's not defined in the database. Okay. So actually, let's let's take you into a map where I actually can show you mm -hmm. what this would look like. Okay. So this is again an advanced map type of feature, not available in a basic right. map. So so let's say um, I'm querying those sales orders from my SQL Server. Okay. And when I go to join in those line items like I normally would, I, d I don't have any relationships here to use. So if the relationships were declared and they could be picked up by the connector, they'd be available in this drop-down list. Yeah. Okay. So instead of pulling those in here, I'm not at a loss, I'll actually be able to process this sales order for each sales order. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll send this over to Salesforce. I have a target where it's ready to accept this sales order header. And then I'm going to be able to use the fetch block to pull in all those related line items. So let's take a look at my fetch block here. As you can see, I just pulled it over from my connection that I want to fetch the records mm -hmm. from. And the first thing that I have to do, I have to choose the database, uh, the table rather, uh, that I want to get the data from. Yep. 
And also, you know, supported on here is if I did have other related entities that I wanted to pull data from, right. I'd be able to pull those in here. Okay. So the next part is defining what, what is that relationship? What are those foreign keys? And that's done on the filter tab. So okay. thinking about the fetch block, it's a lot like the query block where I'm going to get a different result set back. Right. So in here, I'm actually going to be pulling from that relationship that I can see in the database. Yeah, I think you had a slide. Yeah, there we go. You had a slide you're going to show us that helped out with that yeah, explanation. Yeah, so if you think you, you understand relationships and maybe you wrote some SQL queries mm -hmm. like that. So thinking about joining in that related data, I have a SQL query here. I'm going to get my sales order and then I'm going to get the details and I'm going to do that based on these foreign keys. Okay. And so that's where I'm actually going to put that into. That's what the filter criteria is for the fetch okay. block. So the next part, um, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll make sure, just like any of the other operations, I'll define any kind of error handling. You right. know, if I don't find records from this fetch, do I want to fail the row? So you can decide whether you want to throw an error or not by right. just checking the box. And then you can also um, customize what the error message says yeah. if you so want. Think, think about this like if I want to do an inner join, I actually want to fail this record. Right. And the next part that I can do, I can actually preview what this fetch is going to return. Okay. And the one thing you want to do when you're actually doing this preview is instead of, you can actually configure this to dynamically pull that sales order right. and the sales order details. But if I want to preview it, what I'll do is I'll just type in what that sales order ID is. All right, because this preview feature here doesn't support the dynamic replacement. Yeah. So you have to put in a constant value for it. Yeah, yeah. So you could just comment out your dynamic yeah. value, put in the hard-coded value. Okay. And where would you do that? So that's still over on the filter tab. So okay. in here, I'll just take whatever the sales order ID is. I found it. Drop in my, it in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next part that we're going to get a, a different result set back here. So I have one sales order and I could have multiple lines. Okay. So inside of the fetch block, these operations so that I'm going to pull out here from my target. Right. These are all kind of going to be flattened out like you would see in that SQL Server query. And those operations that you're putting inside of that fetch block are going to be processed for each row that comes back in that fetch block result yes, set. Exactly. So you could be updating multiple sales orders, or in this case, line items. Yes. Okay. So so I could have three different line items, and I'm going to cycle in here. You'll see the icon yep. here. I know I'm going to cycle through. And it those. knows it's on the first one. It knows how to iterate through yes. the first, second, and third, and stop when it gets to the last one in that result exactly. set. Exactly. Okay. So let's kind of take you through inside of the fetch block, mm -hmm. everything is going to be kind of flattened out so that I can see everything that's in scope of my map. Okay. So we think about we did a query, so we know what the query record is, the right. primary, the sales order. Any previous operations, so if I did an operation to upsert the sales order to my target, mm -hmm. I'll be able to get the backfill from that so I know how to relate these child records. Okay. And then the current fetched row. That All right. Item. Now, can I ask you about backfill? Yes. So, because <laughs> that's a really a key concept, and I think that's something that we we it's a terminology that we use at Scribe, and we just kind of throw it around sometimes. <laughs> and maybe not everybody understands what we mean by backfill. Yeah. So, could so, you explain that just a little bit? So, we're dealing with these related records on the source. Well, when we put it in the target, we need to relate them as well. Right. So, every time I'm going to create these line items on my target, there's going to be a field there where I'm going to populate the headers ID, and that's how yeah. those relate together. So any operation we're doing against a target, we can get the results of that back and use it in a right. subsequent block. Yeah. That the backfill, that part of the backfill part is it. It's an operation against a target. We can keep track of what that operation was and any values that were set, and then we can bring those values back. And they're in scope again for yeah. us to use in other places. Yeah. So let me show you how that looks. Yeah. So inside of my upsert, I'm choosing this is the line item that okay. I'm going to be creating. I'm going to iterate through those three. And when I go to the fields tab, I'm going to see over here on my source side, these are the three areas of data that I'm going to be able to map from. So I have my sales order. This is the name of the query block. So these are all the fields from my query. Okay. I also have the single fetched line that I'm working with at the time. So these are all fields from that sales order detail that I can map over. From your fetch block? Yeah. Okay. And so you can actually see when I map those how they're named differently. Right. And so the nomenclature tells me that I'm going to map in the sales order name, but the actual line item is going to be mapped from that specific okay. detail. Okay. All right. And the other thing we can do, like you were saying, this is what we call backfill. It's the result of that sales order header that I created. Okay. And this is where I'm actually going to be mapping in 
the sales order, the target's sales order ID. Okay, so that sales order ID was set by the target connector. Right. But because of the backfill, we can detect what the ID was, yeah. and that's in scope for us now, and you can map it to its, exactly. its related child record. Yeah, so in this okay. case, Salesforce defined this. I didn't even map this in. Right. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do here is what, now we have a sales order okay. from our source. We don't have the relationship to the target, so what we're going to do for each sales order, we're going to create it, the header on the target. Okay. Then we're going to go through back to our source, find all those line items associated with our original query header, and then we're going to iterate through these upserts onto the target, relating them. Pretty good. Yeah. Is there anything else that we think we need to tell people about? I don't think so. I think block? we got it. All right, great. Well, Nate, well, thanks a lot for sharing your knowledge and doing the preparation to help our our valued customers and viewers learn a little more about Scribe Online. Anytime. Thank you.